Welcome back to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are well and I hope you're having a beautiful day, whatever time or day that you're listening to this. We're going to be talking about setting boundaries and having tough conversations in relationships. And this is such a challenging topic for a lot of people. It's definitely challenging for me early on. It's why I've done a lot of, I guess, exploration, a lot of learning, a lot of work in this area because it's something I had a lot of pain around growing up. I saw a lot of arguments verbally, physically, mentally, emotionally with my parents growing up, with my friendships growing up, with my family growing up. And it's something that I never really got taught how to regulate emotions, how to, how to hold space for someone to express themselves, how to have clear expectations and boundaries that's all the stuff we're going to be talking about today. So guys, before we do get into it, if I can ask you a massive favor, if you do mind or don't mind hitting the like button down below, it just helps me reach more people. It helps with the algorithm and it helps me just impact more people and change more lives. So if you can take literally two seconds of your day, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, let's rock and roll. Guys, the first step, there's a couple of steps I got here because when it comes to, I guess, setting boundaries and then holding space for someone or helping someone um, a whole, having consequences for someone in a relationship, there's things that you got to do beforehand. It's kind of like you go into the gym and you want to do an incredible uh, deadlift or squat or do this amazing movement that you've never done before. There's so much groundwork that needs to be done for you to get to the ability to be able to do that, right? You can't just rock up and magically do it. It takes training. It takes preparation. There's things that need to be done foundationally for you to be able to have great uh, tough conversations or open conversations to set the right boundaries. So I'm going to start from the foundational level. So then we will lead up to literally, I'll give you some role play of how I approach tough conversations, how I word them, what do I say? How do I regulate my emotions? How do I hold space for my partner? So I'm going to go foundational and then we're going to lead up to, okay, how do you actually physically say or do the thing to set a boundary and to have a tough conversation? So first things first, self-worth is one of the biggest, if not the biggest factor when it comes into this. If your self-worth is very fucking low, then you're going to allow poor behavior because you don't value yourself enough and then you allow yourself to be taken advantage of, to be manipulated, to be stood all over. So doing inner work, working on your self-worth, which I've done content on, my most previous podcast is on self-worth. Go listen to that, go watch it, go take the value out of it and implement it. Because if your self-worth is shit and terrible, if I just give you the strategy of how to do the, have the tough conversation or how to set the boundaries, you're not gonna do it or you're not gonna follow through on it or you're not going to enforce it. So again, foundationally, you've gotta have incredible levels of self-worth and I'm not gonna go into full detail on that today, but go watch my previous podcast on that. But really simple, understand your values, set them into your calendar, Make sure you hold people to them. Make sure you're hanging around the right people. Making sure that you're working on your own stuff. You're healing from any traumas and wounds that you've got, which we all have. Constantly be doing inner work. As your self-worth grows, the less bad behavior you tolerate and the better quality of partner and relationship you attract into your life. So please, first and foremost, make sure you're constantly working on yourself. Increase your self-worth. Second step when it comes to this is you gotta have the right vision or not the right vision. You need to have a vision for your relationship and there needs to be alignment with your partner. If you have a vision for your relationship to be, I know, with someone who's very fit and healthy and active and health is a really high value of yours and health is a non-negotiable for yours and then a non-negotiable is your partner is to look after their health. If you were to date someone who hates training, that never wants to train, that eats terrible, and then you're trying to force them to look after their health, it's just like pushing a rock uphill. So you wanna get clear on your vision for your relationship. When you're looking for your partner, they must be aligned with that vision and then you've gotta communicate that vision together. So there's alignment there. Another example, if you want kids, you've got your heart set on having kids, having a family, and the partner that you date or get together with never wants to have kids, never wants to have a family, then again, you're pushing a rock uphill. So you've got to understand your vision for a relationship. And most people don't have that answer. They just want great sex. They want someone who's good looking. They want someone who's going to love them and be there for them, which is a good start. 
But what does the vision for your relationship actually look like? Intellectually, spiritually, sexually, mentally, emotionally, financially. Do you want to travel? Do you want to have kids? Do you want to have a family? What do you want to do with your business and your wealth? What is the vision for your relationship? And then does your partner have the same alignment with their vision? Because if it's not there, you're pushing a rock uphill. You're trying to jam a square peg in a round hole. You can force it and you can try to get it in there. But at the end of the day, there's just going to be so much conflict. There's going to be so much disagreement. There's going to be so much resentment and guilt and bad energy between each other. So instead of doing that, instead of pushing a rock uphill, instead of jamming a square peg in a round hole, why not just find someone who's aligned with your vision? So do that. From there, this is something that I find a lot with a lot of clients I work with, a lot of family members actually that, that, uh, that I've seen go through this and friends and myself, I used to be this as well is when people get into a relationship, they stop looking after themselves. Because we go back to step one and you've got high levels of self-worth. To have high levels of self-worth, you need to do certain things. You need to look after yourself, look after your values, be selfish, to be selfless, fill your cup so you can pour from a full cup. You've got to do those things. But when people get into a relationship, they stop doing those things. And they put the relationship ahead of everything. You've got to... Look after the goose that lays the golden eggs. You've got to look after you. So when you get into a relationship, don't sacrifice yourself. Don't put your partner's needs ahead of you. Will there be time and places to do so? Of course. If your partner gets really sick and you need to be there for them. If your partner is pregnant and you need a little bit of help with doing things, of course. Is there times where there's a little bit of give and take in a relationship? Absolutely. fucking lutely But foundationally, you've got to still look after yourself. Like I still put myself first in my relationship. So I'm the best version of me for my relationship. And I hope this is clicking and making sense for you because if you're sacrificing your health, your learning, your career, your business, your friendships and your family purely for your relationship, yes, that's nice short term because your partner is probably happy. Oh my God, they love me so much. They're doing everything for me. It's not sustainable. And the person who's sacrificing themselves is lowering their self-worth, beating themselves up internally and giving up on themselves. And that will ruin the relationship or just lead to a very shallow, unfulfilling relationship. So you must still continue to look after yourself once you're in that relationship. From there, so you've got the vision. You're looking after yourself. You've got high levels of self-worth. You want to make sure that you guys are both clear on the expectations and the consequences for your relationship. And this is not the sexy stuff that people like talking about. This is the stuff most people avoid when it comes to a relationship, but you've got to have those transparent conversations. Now, just something when it comes to expectations is it must be balanced. It must be fair and equitable because no one in quotations is perfect because perfect, and when I'm saying that is one-sided. They're, only, they're positive all the time. They're never sad. They're always happy. They're never down. They're always giving. They're never taking. They're always up. They're never... like that. It's one-sided. That is bullshit. Everyone has downsides. I've got downsides. You listening to this, you have downsides as well. So to expect your partner to have nothing but upsides to them is a fantasy. And you attract a nightmare into your life to balance that bullshit out. So don't expect your partner to be perfect. Don't expect them to put your needs ahead of their own. Don't expect them to be one-sided. Everyone has downsides and so do I and so do you. So understand, yes, set expectations, but make sure they're reasonable. Make sure they're balanced. Like uh, is, a, is a reasonable expectation is your partner doesn't cheat on you every single weekend? Absolutely. I think that's a fair and reasonable expectation. So you got to get clear on what are the expectations and then what are the consequences? Because I find this because if you lack self-worth, that's why that part comes first, is if you lack self-worth, you won't enforce the consequences. You won't enforce the boundaries. You won't enforce the expectations. So you get clear on for you and everyone's different. What are your expectations in the relationship? I'll give you some examples for me that might help out. For me, someone that looks after their health. I can't personally, and there's no judgment for people that don't, I can't be with someone who doesn't look after their health. I don't expect my partner to be the world's best CrossFitter or the world's best athlete. I don't have that expectation, but someone who looks after their health, trains consistently, eats good food, doesn't eat processed shit every single day, doesn't smoke. Like that's 
That's me. And there's no right or wrong with that. That's just mine. Another one for me is self-growth. I could not be with someone who doesn't prioritize and work on themselves because I am and I'm someone who does do that. If I constantly grow and evolve, which I do, and my partner doesn't, it creates a huge separation between us. And then there's just going to be a huge conflict with levels of communication, levels of intimacy, levels of connection, and it's just going to ruin the relationship. And I'm just upfront about that. Because I'm clear on the vision. I'm clear on who I am. I have high levels of self-worth. I'm prepared to have those conversations. And it actually sounded like this if you guys want a bit of a role play and a bit of an example. This is three years ago. I've been with my partner for over three years now. And I said, hey, baby, can I be really transparent with you? Something that is a non-negotiable in my life is self-growth because it helps me become a better man, a better leader for my business, a better father in the future, a better friend, a better family member, a better partner for you. And the thing is, just to be transparent with you, is if I continue to grow, pretty much what I just said, there's going to create a huge gap between us and it's honestly going to ruin our levels of connection, our levels of intimacy and our relationship as a whole. So non-negotiable for me is my partner must grow. I don't, and I said to her, I don't expect you to be Tony Robbins. I don't expect you to go be the world's best self-development guru on the planet. But foundationally, I do expect you to work on yourself. Is that something that you're open to and something that you're committed to doing. And she said, yes. And she reads books, she has coaches, she works on herself. She's not Tony Robbins by any means and neither am I, but she works on herself. So again, I was clear on it. I was clear on my vision. I forgot the level of self-worth. So I'm willing to have that conversation and I communicate it in a healthy way. So that's the next step. So this is the part that you're probably looking for. How do you actually have the tough conversation? How do you actually set the boundaries? I just gave you an example just then. So get clear on what's the boundary and then you want to communicate that. And I just gave you a reasonable example of how to do it. Something that really serves me really well when it comes to having tough conversations or setting boundaries or anything along these lines is I always bring it back to the vision because when when someone feels like they're being attacked, they can get defensive, right? They can bite back and they can get, they can feel hurt and they can, they just don't feel great. So this happens in a relationship. This can happen in a business. This can happen in a company. So whenever I'm having a tough conversation with someone, whether it's my relationship or whether it's my business or whether it's my friendships or my family, I always come back to the vision or the mission for the business. So it could be something like this. Hey, babe, can I be really transparent with you about something? So, so, yep, is right now a good time to have that conversation or are you busy? Because you want to have the right environment to have a good conversation, right? If they've got like meetings on or they've got shit on or they've just got things on and they're not going to be present, you probably don't want to have that chat now. So is right now a good time or do you want to book in a time that works better for you? They say, no, I'm good to go now. Let's have a chat. Awesome. Look, the reason I wanted to bring this up is I obviously I love you and I care for you and I care for this relationship. I care for the relationship with you and me together and the future for both of us, the vision that we have. So the reason I'm saying this is if I don't bring this up, it's going to ruin the relationship long term and I don't want to do that to you or me. I'd rather just have the conversation now and get it done. So I guess the point I'm getting to is you do this particular thing, whatever the action is, whatever the boundary is, whatever you, they're doing that you don't, doesn't sit well with you. And I just wanted to let you know that actually hurts me and it actually makes me feel this way. And I'm just saying that because you might not be aware of it, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention so we can work on it together because I'm sure I do things to you that hurt you too and I'd love to hear what they are but I want to work on this together because this relationship means so much to me. And that's how I kind of word it. So I go, okay, the, it's about the relationship. It's about the vision. It's about the mission. It's not about them. It's not about, it's not an attack on them. Yes, we all play our parts and you've got to, you've got to do what's fair and equitable, but I always tie it back to the mission. So a good question. Are you willing to work through this with me to get the relationship or for the, for the vision of our relationship? Most people say, yes, if, if they're the right fit, if they're aligned and if you've done this right, say, great. Now, what does that look like? So next time you do this, babe, do you mind maybe trying this instead? Or if you do this, do you mind trying this instead? When this happens, let me know about it. And then you can obviously take care of it. This is obviously individual to whatever the boundaries that's happening or whatever they're doing that's affecting you in a negative way. But that's how I generally frame things. Another tip I want to have on this. So there's kind of three pieces of this puzzle. So how to implement boundaries and tough conversations. Number one, is you want to be able to hold space because in relationships, guys, you're going to get triggered and there's no way around it. I said it earlier on this podcast. There is no way around it. 
We all have trauma. We all have wounds. We, and whenever you're in an intimate relationship, because they get to know you the deepest and they get to know the most authentic version of you, just by definition of that answer, they're going to reveal those wounds that you have not healed through. They're going to press your buttons. They're going to trigger you. They're going to set you off. That's something you cannot avoid. And some people don't, can't handle what I just said. So they get into a relationship. It's good. The honeymoon period kicks off. Great sex, great intimacy. You learn all about each other. And then the real relationship actually starts where you start triggering each other. You start, you start pushing each other's buttons. And because you're both not aware of it or someone's not aware of it, and you're not willing to work through it, hold space and heal through it, then they blame the other partner, they attack the other partner, they don't take responsibility for it, they don't work on themselves, and then they get into another relationship and the cycle fucking happens again. And if you're related to that, (laughs) comment below and let me know if you agree or disagree to that, or maybe you've seen someone do that. So the key is, or just the truth is, you're going to get triggered. Understand that. The blow that hurts the most is the blow you didn't see coming. Understand that's the reality. That's how relationships work. That's why I preach so much about this. You will do most of your spiritual healing and development and personal growth in a relationship because they're going to reveal all of those parts of you that you haven't healed through yet and you haven't worked through yet and therefore give you the opportunity to heal through them. Right there is the money. Right there is the opportunity of what I fucking love relationships. It's why I love my partner so much because we're at a level where we're aware of what I'm saying in this podcast and we've both got the skill set and the consciousness and the tools to be able to hold space, make each other feel seen, heard, loved unconditionally and we get to heal through it. That is what I love the fucking most in a relationship. So... How do you do that? <laughs> is firstly, you got to be conscious of it, conscious of when you're triggered and we all get there. You know what I mean? When you get anger and you get frustrated, when you get anxious, when you get angry, whatever the emotion that you're triggered, be conscious of it, regulate. Do it with me right now. We're going to do, breathe in for five seconds, hold for five seconds, let it out. Breathe in. Hold. Let it out. You do that a couple times, three, and I should have said that as well, is breathe into your stomach. So aim for your belly button, okay? Regulate, be neutral as possible and hold space for each other. Hey, babe, look, I just want to be honest, like I'm triggered right now, if you can't tell, and it's just something I'm working through. And is that easy to do in the moment? Fuck no, because your emotions are flying everywhere. You're in your, your, your inner child, your wounded inner child is out and it hurts and it's hard and you want to say those hurtful fucking things to each other because you're hurt. Remember this line, hurt people, hurt people. So when you're hurt, you want to hurt back. So it's hard. And, it, and I'm, I'm, I'm hand in the air guilty of saying fucking hurtful things to my partner. And it hurts me to even say that out loud on a podcast. But when I'm triggered and I'm in my wounds, which everyone goes into, it's what happens. But then you learn to heal. You learn to become more conscious and they become less frequent and less intense. The most recent one that we had, which was about a month ago, we were both triggered and I was very proud of my efforts because she was in her wounds and so was I, but I was able to hold space and not bite back and not try to hurt back. And I just was regulating. I was like, <sighs> trying to stay as calm as I can. I said, babe, look, I can appreciate where you're coming and I'm sorry for doing what I've done but I want to work through this with you. And then she threw a bit of salt back at me and then I was like, okay, baby, I hear what you're saying. Let's work through this together. And it, again, it's hard. It's fucking hard, but you can get there. So just to read that back to you, be conscious of it. Two, regulate your emotions. Three, hold space. How do you hold space? Good question. Be in a understanding or a perception or have your intention of unconditional love because that's all we want at the end of the day as human beings that's all we want we want to be loved seen and valued for who we are unconditionally because when you're in your wounds and you're crying and you're upset and you're angry and you're triggered you just want to feel seen you want to feel loved you want to be loved so learning to hold space and loving your partner for their triggered emotional hurt self is how you do it 
So learning to just hold that space and create that space of, I fucking love you, babe. Even though you've said some hurtful things or even if you feel hurt right now, I fucking love you for who you are. The strong, beautiful woman that you are or man that you are, whoever's talking. So that's that step. And then the last step, guys, this is something that is very simple, but very, very, uh, very powerful is debriefing. Debriefing is such a powerful tool. You can use this in business, relationships, uh, wherever, any, any area of life. So just debriefing. What was the result? What was the result we were trying to achieve? What did we achieve? Did we achieve it? Like yes or no? Why or why not? And what's our response? So I'll read that back again. So firstly, what was the outcome we wanted to achieve? So the outcome when you're triggered is probably to hold space for each other, to allow each other to express yourselves and do a bit of, bit of healing work, right? Two, what was achieved? Did you do it or not? Maybe you didn't. Maybe you just lost each other's fucking emotions. You just screamed at each other. You said some hurtful things and you said some things that you didn't mean. Cool. That's fine. It happens. It's happened to me too. I've done that. Three, why? Why did that happen? Well, were you regulating your emotions? No. Did you... Has this been bottling up for about a week or two weeks or a month or six months? You've been bottling it up for a while and it just exploded in this huge emotional vomit and argument. So maybe you can, response, actually do it sooner rather than later. So instead of waiting months to bring up something that your partner is doing that's hurting you, why don't you tell them the moment it happens? So instead of letting that shit bottle up and fester and grow and build up all this pressure until it explodes, why not just bring it up then and there. Hey, babe, I just wanted to let you know that you the thing you just said last night or the thing that you said just then actually hurt. I know you probably didn't intend it to, but I just want to let you know that it did so you're aware of it and so you can just be conscious of that for next time. Why don't you do that instead of waiting fucking six months, resenting this person, having guilt, having anger, having frustration and let that shit bottle up and brew and then explode in a huge argument. And I've done that as well. I've done all of these things. I'm speaking to myself right now. So, those are my tips, guys. I'll, I'll read that back just to summarize. Number one, look after yourself. Self-worth comes first. Number two, make sure you've got the vision for your relationship and there's alignment in that vision with the partner that you're dating. Number three, don't lose yourself in the relationship. Continue to do the things that help with your self-worth. Three, have expectations and consequences, but make sure they're balanced. No one's perfect. Everyone has downsides. Everyone has weaknesses. Not everyone is perfect. In fact, having downsides and upsides is perfection in my eyes. Number uh, five is to implement that. And to do that, there's three parts. You hold, sp you regulate your emotions, you hold space and you communicate it in a healthy way. Number six, we debrief. What was the result we wanted? What was the result that was achieved? Was it achieved? Yes or no? Why or why not? And what's our response? How can we be better from that? Guys, I hope you got value from this. I hope you did. If you did, like the video if you haven't, comment down below, send it to a friend that you think will get value from this and I'm sending you love your way. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll speak to you soon. See ya.